Are you ready for the most boring, worst episode of I Hate Your Movie Ever? Why? You'll find out. Hello and welcome to I Hate Your Movie, a movie podcast where me and Dan inflict movies upon each other for entertainment purposes. Uh, hello. Yeah, that's Dan. And I'm Rick. This week we watched the 2020 film Palm Springs mm -hmm. starring Adam Sandler and Christina Malotti. Adam Sandler. Did I say Adam Sandler? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't Adam Sandler. Andy Samberg. Might as well have been. Oh, the fighting words to begin with. <laughs> this film went on to the indie circuit, and it's the highest paid for film of the indie circuit ever. It got bought for 17.5 million and 69 cents, beating the previous record by 69 cents. Okay. <laughs> it has a 7.4 on IMDb, a 4.4 on Amazon, because that's where it's hosted, and a quite amazing. 94% Rotten Tomatoes score. It's funny. It's got heart. It's got love. It's got comedy. It's got a bit of everything. I recommend this film. Dan is looking at me like I'm insane. So Dan... <laughs> only only 95% of population is insane. Well, if one person believes 99% of the population is insane, is that likely to be the case? No. Mm. <laughs> this film kind of came out of nowhere for Andy Samberg. Mm -hmm. Andy Samberg's mostly famous for Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm -hmm. He's a sitcom actor. Yeah. So he, people didn't really do that transition into like, movie star. They have made films. This is a film by, made by The Lonely Island. Check out everything that they've done because it's good. I've mostly known them as The Lonely Island mm -hmm. uh, and then mostly the music. Yeah. I suppose you want my one sentence review? I do want your one sentence review. If it weren't for my notes, you could convince me that I didn't watch this movie. Because <laughs> I don't remember a single fucking thing out of it. But why? It went into my ear and my eyeballs and it left without anything. The most whatever movie that's ever been made is generic. The characters didn't make any sense, I remember that. Whoa, that's yeah. not true. We'll get into that. Okay. It didn't leave a lasting impact or any impact. Okay, so let's start with the fact that it is a romantic comedy. Yeah. Those generally don't tend to do those things. I can name a few. That yeah. Does, yeah. Go on then. Punch Drunk Love. That's the Adam Sandler movie. That's not an Adam Sandler movie. Eternal S Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. That is not a romantic comedy. It is. It's a depressing comedy right. or a uh, depressing romance. Uh, that is not... <laughs> Mar Marley and Me or Marley and Me. That's about a dog. Yeah. And the romantic comedy. Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> I ran out, okay? You didn't you, have... You barely had one. You called my bluff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you Marley and Me. I haven't seen it. but Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day. Isn't like a romantic. It is. It is about the lady and the guy. Kind of. Um, about the guy. Schindler's List. <laughs> That famous romantic comedy. <laughs> yeah. All right, you called my bluff. But the fact that it's romantic comedy is going to come under the same scrutiny for me as any other movie. And you can grab me and have me enjoy a romantic comedy if it's good and well done. I think this was well done. Palm strings. Palm strings. Palm, <laughs> palm, 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 palm. I don't remember a single thing about this movie. What? I'll be real without exaggeration. I remember a couple of times where I chuckled. Yeah, you laughed at some a few points in this film. I don't remember what it was. Uh, it's a comedy. I remember the weird face guy who plays Superman on TV, who looks like he's... Uh... Oh yeah, he is the guy who plays Superman on TV. Yeah. I can't tell if he's ugly or handsome. He looks like generations of inbred celebrities. Because he's kind of handsome, <laughs> but he's like, his eyes are too far apart. He's like if the guy who draws Rick and Morty drew a <laughs> handsome person. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He can't look away when he's on the screen. What's wrong with his face? Ben, is he handsome or not? Yes. Yeah, he's the Nicolas Cage of... Is he... <laughs> <laughs> is he Is he good looking or not? Is he a good actor? Is he another good actor? Yeah, that's all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... God. I also remember J.K. Simmons with a crossbow. I don't know why. What do you mean you don't know why? Come on. <laughs> you know why. It <laughs> explains it very clearly in the film. He's, he's part of the cycle thing. 
Yeah. I just don't remember why, what, or anything. I've got complete amnesia from this film. I think you need to, to seek medical attention. <laughs> <laughs> Even badness, you could, should be able to remember what happened. That's the thing, like, I don't hate this movie, because I don't remember it. I'd rather watch a worse movie <laughs> that at least would be memorable. Right, so anyway, if you haven't seen the film, which, you know, you should, because it's amazing, I'll tell you what who I'd recommend this film to. Not me. Not you, no. I would recommend it to, like, young adults who are looking for, like, a film to watch with their partner, just like us. <laughs> Coming out. <laughs> yeah, it's just a cool little romantic comedy. I watched this with my wife, and she really enjoyed it. I told her that we were going to watch this, and she was like, oh, that's a really good film. Oh, Dan's going to slag it off, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> It's different, though. It's a different thing than anything you've shown me before. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I only experienced this kind of one ear, one out thing with, like, the Transformers movies. Yeah, I got... I, I, okay. It, yeah. it was like that. It was like, things are happening, and maybe I enjoy it. I don't even remember, but it just completely leaves me. So anyway, if you haven't seen the film, the premise is Andy Sandberg's... At Groundwork Day. Yeah, Andy Sandberg's at a wedding and he's clearly something's up. He goes to sleep with Christina Malotti. Uh, Andy Sandberg gets hit in the back with an arrow because somebody's hunting him and they go into a cave together and it turns out it's an infinite time loop. Yeah, it's Russian doll meets Grand Hogs Day. Yeah. <laughs> that was my joke of Those the episode. <laughs> <laughs> same kind of plot meets the same kind of plot. Okay, let's get something else out of the way first okay. of all, right? I love time loop things yeah i really do every sci-fi show out there at some point has a time loop episode and even some like non-sci-fi shows have it yeah and they are always the best episodes it, they're all brilliant every single one of them i like groundhog though i gave up on russian door i watched the first series it had a weird ending that i didn't yeah, understand I, think... I would love to be stuck in a time loop would you love to be stuck in a time that was my first question to you if you were stuck in a time loop, would you enjoy it? And what would you do with your time? Well, I guess it depends where I am. I would. It's like yesterday. Uh, no. <laughs> you wouldn't have to go like to work or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that, it, that never stops scares me. Hmm? If I had the option of stopping it, then yeah. That it scares me that it's a forever loop. Yeah? I think I'd go mad, yeah. So, I read in the trivia, and I don't know if it's actually from somewhere, but the trivia for this is that Andy Sandberg has been stuck in the loop for somewhere between 40 years and 40 million years. Yeah, there were some illusions of interesting stuff, and that's the only thing I wrote down, which is he keeps, like, forgetting stuff, what he's done. Like, he doesn't even remember where he worked. Yeah. And I was like, that's more interesting than anything in this movie. I wish they explored that. It's almost like has this weird dark edge to it. Yeah, I think that's the point of it as well. Like, because Andy Sandberg's character, most of the time he's, ah, oh, I don't care, whatever. We we'll just have fun and chill out. But there's a real darkness yeah. to like his character and what yeah. he's going through. I wish they'd got, gone a bit more into that. Feels like a untapped potential in drama. In this romantic comedy. <laughs> yeah, you need drama for comedy as well. There was drama in this. There was drama. There was enough drama. I felt like that was the real meat that they kind of missed. They ate the potatoes. They ate the broccoli. They forgot the fucking meat. That was that was the interesting part. For me. Sorry, vegans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I really like about this film, they, it skips a lot of the intro. This film knows you've watched Groundhog Day. It knows that you already know what a time loop thing is. I think he even says it. It's one of my favorite lines of the film. When Christina Malotti first confronts him and he's like, yeah, this is one of those infinite time loop situations <laughs> you might have heard of. <laughs> so you laughed at that and you laughed at the time yeah. as well. I don't, I don't remember that line. That's why I laugh now. <laughs> <laughs> it's another bit you laughed at, actually. Okay. This is kind of, it shows the consequence of being in a time loop and mm. it doesn't really matter what happens because the bride trips over, smashes out all her oh, teeth. Yeah. And then, yeah, she wakes up the next day and it's like, oh, everything's fine again. You laughed at that. Come okay. <laughs> I, I believe you. Actually, did you answer the question what you would do in an infant time loop? What would I do? Yeah. Fuck everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to be able to chat them on. Right? Consensually. I'd we were, we're saying consensually, right? <laughs> sure. I'll learn everything about them. I can, I can get to like a day. I, I don't think... <laughs> He, he does in the movie. No, he doesn't. He, you see him trying and he but fails. But he, he says he had sex with her later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says he had sex with other people later on. Like two other people. Yeah. That's not the same All right. as everyone. All right, I'm just joking. Um, 
Ah, I don't know. It's a really interesting thing because I think about this quite a lot. What could you do? Yeah. You know, because you can't play video games because you, you lose your progress every day. Mm-hmm. You can't write because mm-hmm. nothing matters. I think the biggest thing you would be able to do is read. Yeah. Yeah, anything that's input into you could accumulate. Yeah. You can watch TV episodes. Yeah. Sounds boring. <laughs> Sounds awesome. It's like having the day off forever. <laughs> forever. I think everyone could go mad after a while. It's just too much. You could eat whatever you wanted. Imagine you could just take all your savings or all the credit that you just go to apply to a bank, get loads of credit and just go nuts. You could live like a king for a day and... I'd probably try some extreme sports that I wouldn't otherwise. Yeah. Like bungee jumping. But not on the first day. Because what if that's the last day of the loop? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, do you reckon you could learn things? Do you reckon you yeah. could learn to skateboard? Yeah, yeah. It happens in Groundhog Day. He learns to play the piano. So maybe no. I wouldn't be in a time loop. No? No. I'd be too scared that it goes on forever. Humans are social creatures. And you then... Social during a time loop? You can't build relationships. You can't make friendships. You know, it gets bad after a while. Hmm. And also... I don't know, it would be weird to think what it does to the brain because, you know, you remember your childhood lasting forever. That's how the human brain works. Yeah, you, your brain is programmed to remember new things. Yeah. And therefore, the less new things happen as you get older, therefore that's why the older people get, the more they're like, oh, this year's flown by. Yeah. yeah it's because so you, you did the same shit you did 10 years ago and your brain hasn't remembered it. Yeah, so I, I wonder if it would just start to merge together and you just end up being just staying in bed and doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. You would, you, but not in a fun way. You'd go through phases of that and then you'd come out the other side and you'd mm-hmm. have another idea of, oh, actually, you know, I'm going to go back to the Ivy because it was delicious. Yeah. I'm going to go uh, steal a car. Yeah, I would, I would, I would do a GTA day. Because <laughs> <laughs> then you could meet more people, mm-hmm. you know. The thing is, like, you could go to London. You would struggle to meet everyone in London. Mm-hmm. And by the time you got to the end, you wouldn't remember the people from the start. So you, you'd constantly be like having interesting conversations and stuff. That's the ideal scenario. Right in. <laughs> With what you would do in an infinite time loop. Yeah. I wonder if it turned into a heaven fatigue scenario. You know what heaven fatigue is? Is it like the good place when yeah. everyone's bored? Yeah. <laughs> it probably would turn into that. So it turns out that the reason they're time looping, you don't really find out the reason totally, but there's a cave yeah. that every day the earthquake happens and a cave appears and that's what causes the time loop. This is where like Christina Mulotti keeps going into it to try and get out. Yeah. Does she go a bit mad here? She tries suicide very quickly in day three. I think it's implied that there's days in between what you see. Sarah Bellotti. Christina Malotti. Kirsten. I really should look that up. That might not be her name at all. I know. It's just I need to refer to something. <laughs> mother from her, met your mother. <laughs> Christina's sister's having a wedding with inbred celebrity face guy. <laughs> She's like the screw up of the family. She's the drunk one. Mm-hmm. Sleeps around. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the scene when they were Andy Sandberg's first trying to woo her? And he's on the dance floor and he's like taking people's drinks and like... <laughs> Um, yeah, he's really... mimicking other people's dance and yeah. stuff. I was thinking it could be more perfect. Okay. Based on how, if he's really been here for years and years. It was like semi-perfect. Doesn't take it too seriously. Maybe. Doesn't take it too seriously and he's quite drunk. Yeah. I thought it was really good. And to be honest, that ruined a little bit of it for me. Yeah, why? Yeah, because he lies to her and he tells her that they haven't slept together. And I don't know if that's supposed to be convincing the audience as well. Because it doesn't, because he's gone through all of that to sleep with her. And that's clearly, that's what he his intention was from the start. And he's practiced all these moves for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. So obviously they've slept together. So, I mean, you can't remember anything about the film, apparently. But did you assume that they had already slept together? I think not. Really? Yeah, I think I believe that. But I just don't remember. <laughs> I just don't remember. I mean, that's a really cool scene. It shows the time loopiness yeah. of it all. But I think without that scene, it's a bit more ambiguous. Oh, no, they haven't slept together before. That whole aspect of the drama felt very, like, surface level shallow to me. Oh, you said you haven't slept with me. It's like, in this weird scenario, like, who cares? They're, like, in this supernatural, weird fucking ass world, loop world. Like, they got bigger things to worry about. Kind of, but, like, it's important. Because there is, like, a whole question there like how 
morally right is that? Yeah, there is. I don't want to delve into that anymore because it's a bit too heavy. <laughs> <'Cause>... <laughs> There's a whole conversation on consent and like yeah. trickery that I don't really want to talk about. If you take out the time loop, let's say you sneakily spy on someone and learn everything about them. That is an applicable scenario mm -hmm. where you're a creepy weirdo who used your spy knowledge to your advantage. Yeah. So I guess it's wrong. There you go. Here you go. Here's the final judgment. <laughs> Edit in like a hammer. Hammer time. <laughs> Rule. There are scenes where one of them dies and the other keeps living on. Mm -hmm. So like, what exactly happens? It would have been interesting if one of them killed themselves and then to see like, okay, the other one keeps on living. So what happens? Like, does, he, does the body disappear or? No, it just, it'd be just dead there, I would imagine. I know, but like some uh, weird thing about that with consciousness. If they're reliving this experience with, with their consciousness and one of them loses consciousness. So like, I don't know, because it's so, ah, it, it makes <laughs> my head hurt. Because this is all about perception and what they know and what they perceive. The whole experience is based on that. But it has to be based on both of them. Yeah. So if one of them is out of the equation, then it's who is it based on? Yeah. What gets me is when they fall asleep, they wake up on the same day. Mm -hmm. So it's when they fall asleep. Yeah. So you're right. Say Andy Samberg's standing there. Mm -hmm. Christina Malotti falls asleep. She will then wake up the morning again. Mm. But what happens if he then wakes her up? Is she not able to be woken up? Or does that break her out of the time loop? <laughs> yeah, that's a better question than the dead one. What did you think about J.K. Simmons' character? He's good. I did not completely understand his motivation. He turns up in this, at a wedding in this like really cool white suit <laughs> and this hat. And it's an improvised line, actually, where like they're drinking at the bar. And Andy Samba's like, I like your hat. And he's like, of course you do. <laughs> I wrote down a note from that. Go on. On my, one of my five notes. So this is a flashback to an earlier... He's in the loop, but he's earlier on in the loop. Yep. And I like that he has a suit in the flashback. Mm -hmm. And the sandbag is like signifying that he's not completely given up yet. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely see like a progression. Yeah. Through flashbacks. I like that little detail. Hmm. Yeah, so they do drugs. In J.K. Simmons like, yeah. snorts a bunch of something. I think it's blue. Is it blue? <laughs> I don't know. That's um, not the meth from Breaking Bad. They're super high, and J.K. Simmons is like, oh, this is the best day ever. I wish this day would go on forever. And in their intoxicated state, he takes him to the cave. And now J.K. Simmons hates him for it, and yeah. he hunts him like an animal. <laughs> but, but why? What's killing him is going to do? He already knows that he's killing him. is not going to do anything. He should know that. Yeah, but it's inflicting pain him because it's his fault that he's trapped in this loop and he's angry at him. And killing him is the only thing that doesn't matter. What about revenge? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a callback. I just feel like that makes him kind of stupid because maybe I tried that one or two times. Also, it's set up that he lives really far away and he drove in. Yeah. You have to keep the anger up so much I while think you're you driving. Would. You would, though, right? Because you, you would have days, whole days, where you woke up. You're like, fuck this shit. Fucking guy. Maybe twice. But then I would, because I know he probably is the only one experiencing this. Maybe I would reach out to him and try to fix this. I think individually they tried to fix it in their own ways. Yeah. And they couldn't. That might be what he's doing. He might be trying to find a way out constantly mm -hmm. and then every now and again he furious fails mm -hmm. and he gets angry and hunts Andy Samberg okay <laughs> all right maybe it made perfect sense to me okay what made perfect sense to me is that he doesn't do it every loop it's only like once in a thousand or something and sometimes he gets stuck in traffic <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't he'd never get stuck in traffic because he knows where the traffic is the traffic would be the same every day hmm I guess so she believes altruism it's going to get her out. And she whispers something into the bride's ear. Yeah. Do you know what she whispered? Well, probably that he's cheating on yeah. the cool. husband. I yeah. figured that as well. He wants to make weird uh, incest babies. Incest babies? Yeah, because that guy's a weird incest man. Right, okay. <laughs> Remember? Remember my only joke from this episode? <laughs> <laughs> this is another bit you laughed at as well, where he tries to sleep with the bride of the wedding. So, hey, do you want to get out of here? And the groom's like, dude, this is the first dance. Okay. <laughs> I heard you laugh at that. All right, I believe you. <laughs> I don't remember that scene. I believe you. 
It's like, is that a deal breaker? <laughs> They do a choreographed dance in the bar. They walk in and they do all the 80s hand gestures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they walk out flipping everyone off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Isn't she supposed to be doing altruism, though? No, she gave up an altruism. She, she did the nicest thing she could think of. I think this is where I wrote down. Her character didn't feel right to me. Two sudden 180 turns. Maybe not here, but later on when the drama comes up that mm -hmm. he fucked her. I was like, and she does this, like, disappearing act. Yeah. And she Googles quantum physics. <laughs> How to teach quantum physics to your no. dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's an actual book, by the way. Yeah. It's very good. I think this is why I'm kind of struggling. Because there's like comedic things in the movie. I wish they played it up a bit more. Like her Googling quantum physics <laughs> with no experience. I think that's funny. They should have played it up a bit more. Like in the Wet Hot American Summer. That's not applicable at all. Because it's your thing you said earlier about Bill Murray learning to play the piano. Yeah. It's exactly that. Because you see that in this montage as well. You see her, like, googling it at first. Like, what is quantum mechanics? And then you see her talking to one of the professors. And then you see her... The professor's like, um, yeah, you've, that's exactly right. Like, so she I'm knows not, more than him. I'm not saying it's impossible or it's not doable. I'm saying if I would have liked to see it a bit more played up, that it's funny that she googles quantum physics. Or a bit more, you know, jokes with that and stuff. I think that's why I was missing, like, this romantic comedy is the comedy. You were laughing. They were, they were saying funny things, but I've seen Andy Samberg way more funnier than this and loads of other things. And I think it's just the script needed more jokes. It was an unexplored area of comedy of someone googling quantum physics and, like, do something with that, for example. But it's the same as Groundhog Day. You don't need him, like exploring his first lesson with the piano teacher like that's boring you know that's that would be on. boring but her learning from nothing quantum physics is not boring i think that would be funny and interesting there's so many unexplored things drama and comedy i think this is why i my eye glazed over we missed a bit another bit you laughed at actually okay in this non-comedy comedy <laughs> when she kills roy mm -hmm. and he's lying on the floor blood pouring out of his mouth and he's like who the fuck was that <laughs> Okay. And you were like, <laughs> you can gaslight me in anything you want. I, I you found this film funny, damn it! You laughed. <laughs> you laughed more in this film than like m most of the films that we've watched where that you found funny. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I I remember laughing. I don't remember what I was laughing at. I'm sorry. <laughs> I met your movie. You enjoyed this film while we were watching it. We did. I know you did. I was in a time loop and now I forgot what I was enjoying about it. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. And I was like, while we were watching it, I was like, oh my god, this is leaving my brain. I feel like it's leaving. I, got, I really got to focus. And I did. And it still didn't work. Yeah, so she does this disappearing act, again raising the question how the time loop works. Yeah. I assume that she wakes up earlier than him. On the day. Yeah. That's why she's got a head start and she can get out mm -hmm. before he can find her every day. Yeah. Because it's stupid if she wakes up second, he can just be like, hello. Yeah. She's cheating with the guy, with a weird face yeah. guy. Yeah. She fucked the groom on the night before the wedding. Yeah. And that's her big reveal. Maybe that as well, that both of our characters feel like they're cuds. She's a cheater and he's a, he's a manipulative piece of shit. So I don't really care if they get together. Or They're not. broken people who find each other and make <laughs> each other whole. Yeah, don't you? Aren't you the guy who hates everyone who's a dickhead in movies? These people aren't proper dickheads. Fucking your sister's future to be husband is pretty dickhead. On the night of the wedding, yeah, yeah, that is pretty dickheadish. But you see that she, you know, she's trying to be a better person. She makes mistakes. She just gave a blowjob. What? I'm saying she reduced her interaction with the husband. Oh, from from yeah. uh, vaginal sex to from anal sex to vaginal sex <laughs> to blowjob to hand holding. So your scale, your yeah. scale of intimacy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how much of a betrayal is is cheating. Look, let me explain some junk about dating. Right now you're at tier one, which is hugging, but pretty soon you'll be at tier two, which is smooching. Then down the road, you'll make it to tier five, where she'll let you discover all 15 feet of her long, beautiful stomach. And after a while, you'll make it to tier eight, where you touch her horn for the very first time. Very special. What about tier 15? You stay away from that!
I don't like things where the main character is an arsehole and stays an arsehole okay. for the whole thing. That they don't learn anything from it. These people learn from their mistakes and they they improve on themselves. Okay. Um, this is where he goes and visits Roy at his home. Yeah. Another member will see him. He's like settled down, right? Yeah. He's come to peace with how, it all. How can he remember? So after being hit by the car, he realizes what pain he's putting Andy Sandberg through because he didn't really understand. Even though it reset, he still feels all the pain that he gets put through. Because I think there's a scene where he like he's being tortured. Mm-hmm. Like J.K. Simmons puts like car battery things on his nipples and shit <laughs> or on his testicles. Mm-hmm. He's mellowed with his life. Mm-hmm. And again, you freaking laughed. <laughs> You found this funny, goddammit. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, my wife's up there. She's really nice. Little Susie riding a horse. She's going to draw me a picture later. Jeff over there watering his shit. <laughs> he's got a shit. little, yeah, he's got a little watering can and he's watering like a dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I laughed at that. You did. <laughs> and you have to get. Oh my god, am I imagining something? Did I just watch the film alone? <laughs> it's time, I'm starting to question everything. It's time to go to the mental hospital. <laughs> or the old folks home. But then what happens? Tell me about World War II. <laughs> she turns up again. Yeah, I learned quantum physics. She's learned quantum physics and she's figured out how she's going to get out of the loop. Mm-hmm. And it's by tying C4 to yourself and blowing up in the cave. I think I remember this. There was like five or six different endings for this film. So Andy Sandberg or one of the producers, they went out and they just showed it to a bunch of like their friends and family. And those friends and family kind of just picked the one they enjoyed the most. That's and why you want a fucking committee to write your ending. It's not writing your ending, it's picking an ending that you've written. That's not the same thing. What? Oh, oh, no, let's let's make our film based on things that are popular. Oh, how how dare we? <laughs> well, that's what makes it boring. But also, like, yeah, you don't want to fucking your stupid family to pick your ending. They would pick the worst ending. No, they wouldn't. Yeah. They'd pick the most popular ending. Have you heard of the a committee that had to design a horse, designs a camel, you know? That, old that makes no sense. But that's the old adage. It really makes no sense. What happens is they try to design a horse and let's put this on it. Let's put that on it. I want this on it. I want that on it. And it becomes a camel. What's wrong with camels? <laughs> All right. And you never <laughs> heard this before. I've heard it before, but I've, it never made sense to me. It means that people who have different perspectives, they of course want different things to happen, but they are not in charge of the movie. Here's an Alan Moore quote, right? Okay. That I'm going to butcher really badly right now. <laughs> If the audience knew what they wanted, they wouldn't be the audience, they would be the creator. Okay. And that encapsulates everything. Dodgeball. Dodgeball is the is where you're wrong. Okay. Because they that's what they did with Dodgeball. Is they ended when they lost and everyone hated it. They did test screenings mm-hmm. and they made the director film a happy ending. Mm-hmm. I don't I haven't seen Dodgeball. We talked about it before, but I don't have You have seen, seen- <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I'm, I must be going around. You have, you have, you even agreed with that. No, we, there's a. F- I remember one of one of the episodes we had that exact same discussion, and you said actually, yeah, that makes sense because you know that's one of the rare occasions where the studio was right because as a comedy, it should end on a high note, not a depressing. Yeah, note. those were your words. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you said. Like, what, what is happening? Who am I? Who are you? Where are we? What's I did agree with that. I remember I cut the episode, but I didn't watch Dodge Boy. Just explain this. Okay, that's that's it. <laughs> Recording this from a padded room. <laughs> we watched Exorcist as well. That's also like a yeah, yeah probably studio committee decision, and I agree with that. I'm just saying that, and even that, I don't know what ha- happens in this movie. So maybe it's a good ending. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. But I don't like the majority rule. It's not, and it's not a fucking democracy. The movies I like, it's creative with the vision. It's someone who knows what they want. And that means that a lot of people won't like it. And a lot of people will like it. And I think that's art. And what you're describing is kind of like a fan fiction made by five. No, no, it's not. People. It's that, that's yours talking as if he's gone to his family and they've written his ending for him. He's got four or five endings. Yeah. And then he's shown people 
It's a test screening. But test screenings take... happening all that happen yeah, for I, everything. I don't know that. I don't like know that. it's not you, you're talking as if they've written it for him, and they're not. They just they've they've seen endings. Some of the because you don't know what the other endings were. Maybe yeah. they were shit. Maybe I just don't like the premise of this. Like ninety nine percent, they pick the wrong thing because it's multiple people. And they're going to pick the lowest common denominator, which is either the most boring one or the worst one. No. Anyway, bye. Hitler had a lot of support. <laughs> That's all I'd say. <laughs> You've automatically lost the argument. <laughs> yeah, so that's how they escape. They escape because they go into a cave. They realize how much they love each other. Yeah. Da da da. Music swells. And yeah, they go into a cave and they blow up. He gives a really impassioned speech that even I don't remember. Oh, that's what I wanted to say. Andy Samberg in this film has the same concept as you when it comes to a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, he's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she gives him one sentence and he's like, I just want to say, comma, <laughs> that you are the best thing that's ever happened. Ampersand. <laughs> and it goes on for like... Three minutes. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you've learned your one-sentence review structure from. <laughs> this movie sounds fun. We should watch it. <laughs> <laughs> End of episode. <laughs> Why is this movie called Palm Springs? What the fuck is Palm Springs? I don't know. I think that's where it's set. The creativity of the title is kind of allegoric to the creativity of the movie. You know, what, what's the movie called? Uh, Loopy Loopy... McToony or something like that. No, let's call it uh, San Diego, California. Boo. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that was the end of the film. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. I will eternally recommend it because it's very good. Okay. I'll believe you. <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, out of 10. <laughs> um, is it fair for me to give up out of 10? Yes. Five because yeah. it's the most mediocre, boring film that I'm gonna forget immediately after we're done with this recording. Boo. <laughs> now you know how I feel like when you hate my movies. But I didn't hate this movie. I just, I just like, it's just no lasting impact whatsoever. And there was like opportunities to get into stuff, and that's what I remember. And they just didn't. No, it's a romantic comedy. It's not. The you place can't just for, say that it's yeah. a romantic comedy. You said you do the same thing about horror films. It's a horror film. Me, 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 me. Yeah. You can't. You can't do that. You can't say the whole genre is shit. So it's fine for this movie to be shit. And I know that's not what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But I'm exaggerating. But you can't say that. You can't. You can't do that. That's not a justification. I think if you go to the extremes that you're talking about, really like digging deep into things, then. You, you, so what I'm trying to say is that has its place in a drama mm -hmm. about time loops, but it has no place in a romantic comedy because it distracts from the theme of the film. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think it distracts from the theme of the film. I think you could have gone into that. I think it's like if you took Alien and put a love story into it. Like it just it wouldn't make sense because that's a horror film. Just stick to the horror. No, it's more like Alien, but they go more into the creepiness of the robot filled with the milk yeah in a film called alien that would be distracting and pointless and boring it would make the film worse by inserting this, in, this mm. stuff into it I it's distraction so. cool right well thank you for listening to this episode of dan forgets your movie are we done with this podcast am i not gonna recommend <laughs> anything anymore no no you don't get the <laughs> privilege i'll read the title again <laughs> <laughs> so remember samurai cop god samurai cop I feel like Samurai Cop is a very base level bad movie. Right. Are you, are you kind of feeling what's going to happen? Cool. What's about to happen? I don't want to. I should have stopped. I should have just outroed <laughs> when I had the chance. <laughs> Samurai Cop is an introduction to bad movies. I feel like you're ready for the next level. <laughs> I feel like you're ready for a gentleman named Neil Breen. Who the fuck is Neil Breen? I know, and our listeners are... <gasps> <laughs> he is the Tommy Vice of today. He's an actor, director, editor, director, all those things. He said director twice. <laughs> because he's that good. Um, <laughs> it's a movie called Fateful Findings. A computer scientist slash novelist reunites with his childhood friend, 
hacks into government databases and faces the dire and fateful consequences of the mystical actions he obtained as a child. He has mystical powers, he hacks into the government, yep. and he's a novelist. Do you know what it sounds like? It sounds like sounds like Garth Marenghi, but unintentional. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a very good connection to make. So, fateful findings, here we come. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this episode of Dan Forgets Your Movie. <laughs> Dan Forgets Your Movie. Uh, yeah, I, I tried. No, you didn't. <laughs> I did, I did. No, you fucking did it. Don't even lie about it. <laughs> I made an effort. Uh, the effort was not successful, but I made an effort. We have a Patreon. We do. Where we don't forget movies, where you can recommend movies. Yep. Such as upcoming Foot Soldier, this and that, we have to watch. Yep. Patreon for one pound a month only. Or one dollar. Or one dollar. on your region. One yen. <laughs> One yen. One shilling. <laughs> it's a little, little little boy with a newspaper. Extra, extra. <laughs> New episode of I Hate Your Movie. One shilling only. Patreon.com slash I Hate Your Movie. Yeah. Thank you and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. I would love to be stuck in a time loop. Would you love to be stuck in a time loop? That's my first question to you. If you were stuck in a time loop, would you enjoy it? And what would you do with your time? Oh my God, I'm in the loop of discussing this movie that I didn't like. Oh no.